Hello, today we're going to talk about winning one for the Gipper. What is that about? Well, if you've, if you've been around at all, you've probably heard the expression, win one for the Gipper. There's a true story behind that saying, and today we're going to talk about exactly what it means. The Gipper, the Gipper, was a real football player. And our story starts in 1916. It uh, has a very climactic moment in 1920, but does not uh, come to complete fruition until 1928. So, who was George Gipp? George Gipp was a football player at the University of Notre Dame. He was a real guy. And George Gipp got to Notre Dame in uh, 1916, and he played through 1920. And here is a picture of George Gipp on the sidelines of a football game and a picture of George in practice. Here's a picture of George with his famous coach and, and team. Here is Newt Rockney, the famous Notre Dame coach, and here's George Gipp right in the middle of the picture. So what was so special about Gipp as a player? Well, he was a unique individual. When he got to Notre Dame in 1916, he was just a regular kid going to college. But he was a great athlete. He was one of the greatest athletes of his time in college football. In fact, in 1920, he was an All-American. Now, Gipp was a character. And by that, I mean school wasn't for Gipp. He loved to party. They would often find him smoking and drinking and gambling and not always in class. But they got him in class enough to keep him eligible. And he was the star player on the 1919 uh, national championship team in 1920. The guy was amazing. However, he got pneumonia. In November of 1920, the Gip came down with pneumonia. He was in a hospital bed and he was running a fever. But uh, Notre Dame was getting ready to play its last game of the 1920 season and they were going to go play Northwestern in Evanston, Illinois, and it was cold and icy, and Gip wasn't going to play much, and Rock, Newt Rockney, he said, Gip, you know, we're, gonna, we're not going to play it, but you can go, and finally in the fourth quarter, the crowd, Notre Dame was ahead, and the crowd was chanting Gip's name, Gip, 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 George, George, whatever they were yelling that day, they wanted him, so he got him for a few plays, and the Gipper was happy, and the crowd was happy, and the team was happy that he got to, got to play. And as soon as they got back to South Bend, <clears throat> George Gipp goes straight back to his hospital bed. And a couple of weeks later, he died. He died December 14th, 1920. It rocked the sports world. It rocked Notre Dame. It rocked the nation. George Gipp was only 25 years old. He was two months away from being 26 and graduating. The guy had the world uh, ahead of him. And one of the best athletes in the country was dead. It was really a sad, sad thing for, for the country and Notre Dame. So we're going to fast forward now to 1928. In 1928, Notre Dame had was having an average season. They weren't as good as they normally were, um, but they traveled to New York because on November 10th, 1928, they were going to play Army. Yes, Army, the team that Notre Dame upset in 1913 with the forward pass. Well, they're playing Army again today. On November 10th, Saturday, 1928, they were going to go to Yankee Stadium and play undefeated number one team in the country, Army, in front of 78,000 fans. Well, that night, Newt Rockney got his team in bed and, and he called a, a friend of his, a sports writer, 
by the name of Grantland Rice. Grantland Rice was one of the biggest sports writers of the era, um, just in, still known today among those who follow sports, especially the historians. Rockney called Grant and uh, Grantland Rice and said, hey, Grant, I got the boys tucked in bed. We're ready for tomorrow. Let's get together. And Grantland says, well, why don't you come over to my house? We'll sit by the fire. We'll uh, drink some Tennessee milk. Uh, I know my wife would like to uh, see you again. And Rockney took him up on it. While they were sitting by the fire, Rock was, uh, as Grantland Rice writes, he says Rock was a little subdued that night. He, he wasn't, wasn't himself. And as they talked, Newt Rockney tells Grantland Rice that, uh, you know, I'm not really feeling good about this game tomorrow. We're not the team that uh, we normally are. We don't, we don't have, uh, have everything we need. And I'm really concerned. And I, I think I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm going to have to do something I haven't done before. I'm going to have to call on George Gipp. And he recanted the, the story with Grantland Rice, of which he was very familiar. But, but then Rockney told another story to Grantland Rice that night about a bedside conversation that he had had just prior to George Gipps' death. Well, Grantland Rice writes about that evening, the conversation they had, and then he writes about the game the next day. And here's what Grantland Rice wrote about that game. He says the following day, that 28 Army Notre Dame game played, and as always, it was an overflow crowd. At the half, it was zero to zero, and the rest is history. So when that Notre Dame team went in against that awesomely powerful army game they went into the locker room and and the boys were sitting in front of rock and and here is what rockney said he said boys i've got a story to tell you he said on gip's deathbed eight years ago quote gip looked up at me and after a moment he said rock i know i'm going but I'd like one last request. Someday, Rock, sometime, when the go isn't, going isn't so easy, when the odds are against us, ask a Notre Dame team to win a game for me, for the Gipper. I don't know where I'll be then, Rock, but I'll know about it, and I will be happy. That was Newt Rockney's halftime speech. Go out there and win one for the Gipper. There wasn't a dry eye on that Notre Dame team as they ran out onto that field for the second half in front of 70,000, 78,000 screaming fans. But Notre Dame pulled off an upset victory. They beat that mighty Army team 12 to 6. And the rest is history. That was one of the most famous pep talks of all time. Now here's a little coincidence, just a little bit of side trivia. The hospital in which George Gipp passed away 89 years earlier closed down on December 14th, the same day, 89 years before, George Gipp died on December 14th. Their hospital closed on the anniversary death of their most famous patient. So that is the story of the Gipper, winning one for the Gipper. Now, for those of you who would like to see that enacted, here's the story called Newt Rockney All-American. Patty O'Brien plays a great, great Newt Rockney. But the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, as an actor, he plays George Gipp in this movie. Here's the story played out. Folks, this is a little longer than most of my videos, but uh, I hope you got some really good information out of that. And now you know the story of winning one for the Gipper.